program started, I want to welcome all of you on behalf of the MBTA and Mass DOT. Um, you're all here, obviously, for the S Chelsea Silverline uh, project overview. And uh, before we get started, I just want to um, talk a little bit about uh, housekeeping and if any of you want to speak, I would ask because we are live on Chelsea Cable Access, if you want to speak, ask a question or make a comment, please go to the uh, table here, speak directly into the microphone so the folks at home who are viewing this over uh, cable vision can uh, hear you clearly. So uh, I want to first thank uh, City Manager Tom Ambrosino for hosting us here tonight. He's hosted uh, quite a few meetings over the past uh, several weeks uh, regarding project, various projects in Chelsea, and this is a, a, a very good news story for the residents and businesses here in Chelsea. So um, what I want to also do is recognize some of the elected officials and representatives of elected officials that have come out tonight uh, from the city of Chelsea, Bob Bishop, uh, also city councilor Calvin, Calvin Brown, and representing Senator Di Domenico, uh, Martina Mata. So thank you all for coming out tonight. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to the MBTA General Manager and CEO, Luis Ramirez. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me here and uh, to be able to launch what I think is going to be a really exciting new service for this community. Uh, I came to Massachusetts for this job about seven months ago now. Um, my, one of my first bus trips that I took was the 111. Uh, took it over here to Chelsea with some friends. Um, my friends uh, back there, uh, Mike Verseckis, and another person who works for us at the MBTA. I've been taking the service around the city uh, quite a bit, uh, both the trains, the commuter rail, uh, the Silver Line. And one of the systems that, uh, that I feel most passionately about that we can actually impact here in the next couple of years is our bus service around the entire area. Uh, you'll hear a lot about that. You've heard a lot about that. I know there's probably a lot of meeting fatigue, as I heard from, uh, you know, in terms of all the things that are going on right now with MassDOT and, and all these projects. But uh, what's exciting for me is to be able to be here today and actually be, help, be able to launch on the 21st uh, of next week this new service that we think is going to be a great service. And, um, one of the systems in the, in the city that I actually um, am, am using a lot more is the Silver Line because of the connections that it does both to uh, the southern parts of the city, to the airport, seaport, uh, and downtown areas of Boston. It actually hits all the areas, and I actually am a resident of Boston, so I use it. Uh, but this one is really exciting because a lot of the people that work in the businesses in Boston, uh, especially those folks that work throughout the uh, city supporting all sorts of industries, uh, are really looking forward to for the service. In fact, I've had one of the guys that works in my building tell me he's really uh, looking forward to that because it's going to increase his house price here in Chelsea. So I, th I think it's really been a great uh, story so far. But I really want to talk about a service that, that I think is uh, um, our first expansion of, of a bus service in a while. We have, as you know, started uh, 10 new routes, 10 routes in the morning. Earlier uh, in the morning, something that we started a couple of weeks ago, we're going to be launching this service here, and in addition to this, we're also working right now on, on, on a p potential pilot for some night service extensions in the evenings, uh, and, uh, and are really looking across the uh, MBTA right now to see how we can best execute that. Um, you're going to bear with me with this uh, technology. So we're going to go over a few things today. You know, what is the service? What does it mean to the people that are living in the community here? Um, how is it going to help improve? Um, uh, access both to Chelsea, but also as importantly access to, to the Boston region. Um, how does it make the other services that are here better? Something that I know I heard a lot of feedback on, uh, both from uh, our, our folks here at the MBTA, but really from people who I've talked to who use this service every day. Um, what's it gonna take and, and what's it mean? So I'm gonna go through some of these um, charts, but more importantly, it's really here to introduce this to all of you and to the public and to get any questions or any comments or things that we can help uh, inform you on. So what is the SL3, the Silver Line 3? Uh, it is a service that goes between uh, Chelsea and Boston and you know it goes to some new stations and some existing stations but it's Chelsea, East Boston and South Station and it does make a connection through the airport 
and through the seaport neighborhoods. So this is a, a service that actually connects uh, Chelsea to more than just Boston. And I think it's a really incredible uh, opportunity for not only the folks who live here uh, in Chelsea and work in different parts of Boston, but it actually becomes another way to get to other parts of the region, including the airport and the very busy area right now that a lot of people here work at is Seaport. This is a so we've had a lot of questions about whether this, how's it going to make the commute better? As you all know, uh, there is a lot of congestion in, in, in Boston these days. There's a lot of construction going on, both on this side and on the other side of, of the waterways. Um, you know, bridges and, and uh, uh, viaduct and all sorts of other projects that you've heard about here in the last few weeks. Um, in addition to that, we also have seen tremendous growth in population, and those populations are growing constantly throughout the region as we build more uh, housing and things like that. So this is really going to become a, a better way also for us to commute between here and uh, the airport, seaport, or South Station. And anybody who rides the 111, the 112, the 116, the 117, or anybody traveling on the blue line or anybody who's driving. Uh, so we really think that this service will help to alleviate some of the congestion we're seeing in some of the other service areas, but and also provide us with more direct connection to some of the areas that people are really interested in traveling to. I don't know where this contraption came from, but I can't make it work. No, I'll just do that. Same, no, no. Um, so how's it gonna help? I mean, whether you drive here or you take this, the, the, the bus here or you try to take an alternative way of coming to the area, you know, if you're going to South Station area, you probably start out on a bus, and then you make several transfers until you get to the red line. Um, if you drive, you also deal with a lot of traffic, and everybody knows that, especially tonight. Thursday night, I think, is the worst night for congestion throughout the city now, more than on a Friday. So as you look through there, you deal with a lot of traffic, and you also pay for tolls and parking. Sorry. All right, down. Um, and we wanted to share some numbers with you because I think they, they really do matter. Every weekday, um, we see uh, almost 12,000 riders take the 111 route uh, from Haymarket to here or vice versa. Over time, approximately 2,000 uh, route 111 Drive, uh, riders will make the switch between them and the SL3. And I think that's actually going to help some of the uh, crowding that we get, especially during the rush hour services. Um, and we think that that's gonna be reduced. And these are numbers that are uh, we've studied, we looked at the patterns of travel. And in fact, we, we really believe that it could even be higher than that as we go forward. In addition to introducing this new service that we're working on, uh, we also plan on managing Route 111 differently uh, one of the things that we've been working on with our Better Bus Project is we've been taking a look at individual routes, and, and we have our bus service leader back here, uh, uh, Mr. Carney, and we have Jess Casey here who is responsible for our planning, strategic planning and service department. And we look at how we can make each individual route better. We spent a lot of time um, last year looking at uh, some routes uh, in the system, and we have a, a plan to look at every route all the major routes of the system between now and the end of the year to try to come up with ways to improve service. In some cases, as you probably know, some of the routes that we have in Boston replaced old uh, you know, streetcars services, and those routes have never changed in over 50 years. So it's a really an opportunity for us to take a look at that and make improvements. In addition to that, we're also adding more resources to the network. Um, and we plan to also relocate those resources across the entire network to help improve things. Um, we are partnering with municipalities. This is a really critical part of our focus. Um, as you know, uh, Boston is a relatively uh, old city in North America with, you know, very, the, the roads are not very wide. There's a lot of use, et cetera. And one of the challenges that we've had is getting communities to help work with us on creating dedicated bus lanes and doing signal uh, pr uh, prioritization so that, that when buses are arriving at signals they can actually get the green light to go forward 
and have some more dedicated bus lanes to work in some of these communities. That's something that we're actually uh, announcing here in a, a week or so. We're going to start doing a pilot uh, with the city of Boston on, on one of the routes that's very much used. But these are things that we're now looking at as a part of our overall bus project plans. And this is a really important uh, improvement to provide some type of dedicated routes as we go through this. In addition to that, we're also trying to make sure that we coordinate all of the efforts across both MassDOT, uh, the MBTA, and anybody who's doing construction projects around any of these systems. Over, earlier this uh, year, we did a, a project to take a look at all of the different projects that we're doing across both the highway department, the MBTA, and, and even the municipalities that impact our, any one of our routes or the service routes that we take. Uh, and I'll tell you something, when you put that heat map up, you can see over the course of the summer months, especially uh, our construction season started uh, last week. And even though it only started last week, uh, it's gonna be months uh, this year of a lot of construction projects. We are really uh, throughout the city inundated with a lot of projects that have in some way impact uh, the congestion. So as a result, we're trying to be smarter about how we plan things and in fact, we're taking a look at when we do st uh, construction, when we try to close lanes down and do things like that differently than in the past to make sure we can actually reduce the impact that it's having on our commuters. This is something that's very difficult to do because you have to coordinate it across a lot of different people, uh, you know, different uh, stakeholder groups, different folks that are dealing with different issues. But it's something that we're taking very seriously. And as you think about, you know, your, the situation, in this part of town, as we go and we look across the river here and see all the different projects and different cranes everywhere, it's absolutely true that they have an impact on the overall process of how we get to work. So we're trying to do some, some work by coordinating across that and phasing some of these construction projects in a way that minimize those impacts for our commuters. Uh, in addition, we're going to work with uh, you know, Chelsea uh, throughout the upcoming construction to reduce impacts that are gonna have the greatest impacts on the people uh, to also make that Route 111 better. Uh, and, and we are actively doing this. We've heard the communities, we've heard the feedback, and it's something that we take, and I take personally very seriously. So as we're thinking about this going forward, our goal is to try to really improve it and to find ways to improve it and make these, listen, these construction projects may be uh, difficult to deal with as they're going on, but once they're done, that we're gonna get a much better infrastructure and then a much better service going forward. So it's something that I look forward to, but as, as we go through that together, we have to make sure that we're making those improvements happen. Uh, so what's it gonna look like? That, well, how's it, was the ride? Uh, we went, you know, our Silver Line um, you know, uh, service is unique in a sense because it, it provides one of the more comfortable rides that we have in our bus system. It actually is the technology, uh, the, the, the configuration of the Silver Line makes it very conducive for commutes. Uh, it is accessible. Uh, it's roomier than some of the current buses that, that you have. Uh, it also is going to go to four new stations in Chelsea that you'll be able to travel to uh, in a higher level of comfort in some ways. And these, uh, these uh, routes are also gonna be traveling in parts of our system under an exclusive bus lane. So this is gonna be very critical. One of the reasons why the Silver Line works well in the areas that we currently have it deployed is that for a larger part of its of routes, we actually have dedicated lanes that we get into, dedicated tunnels, and as a result, less stopping and more going. And that's really what the, what the uh, reality is with the new service. And I have to tell you something, this new service took years to develop and years to implement. This isn't something that just started you know, a couple of years ago. Um, and getting a new service like this off the ground for any uh, of our agencies is, is a lot of work. And so we have to thank a lot of people who started the work years ago, provided the, the feedback from the communities and got us going to this, to this place we are today. So I'm really excited about being able to say that we're actually going to deliver the service in 2018. So getting to the stations, look, one of the advantages that we have living in the city is that uh, we do have multiple ways to get around. Um, certainly walking is a very healthy way to get around. Uh, biking is also very healthy. 
And so we do have the ability for people who use bikes and who want to also use uh, pedestrian zones to get to the stations. Uh, those are available to you. One of the things that I heard from some of the folks in, in town who work in town but live here is that they were asking me about, do you, are you providing the same kind of bike racks and things that will enable me to, when I get to my station to still take my ride home? The answer is yes. These are configured that way. Um, we also have paved paths uh, between Box District Station and Eastern Avenue Station. And we've tried to do this very thoughtfully, uh, providing a, a safe path to get between stations with lighting and, and also wayfinding to be able to get uh, people who don't know the area very well to get around that. So it's something that we are focusing on a lot. Um, some of the areas are still, there's construction still happening around it, so some of the wayfinding may change once the final work is done. But what we've tried to do is really create a way for all of our communities to be able to get in there and, and use our wayfinding and systems to make every, every one of our pathways accessible as well. So this is 100% all our ADA accessible. This is designed into the project uh, as are all of our buses. So where will it take me? I think outside there was a brochure that was handed to you. If you turn to the, I think there's a map in the front page of that, it'll show you kind of a more direct line, but it kind of shows you where you can board the SL3 in Chelsea at any one of these four stations. And it also shows you the path that it takes to take you either to, through the airport, the seaport district, and eventually to South Station. So I encourage you to take a look at it next week um, as, we, as we kick off the service. Uh, you know, we're gonna be, uh, that, there'll be an opportunity for us to see that service real time, but it shows you exactly the locations where you can get on and off and how easy it is to get through that. By the way, all of this information is available also in Spanish for those people who are bi need the more bilingual uh, communication on this. This is the side of the, the, the service that takes you from South Station uh, up to Chelsea, but it shows you the airport station and it goes away down through Silver Line Way, World Congress Center, uh, Courthouse, and then South Station. So as I think about this service, uh, and if you were to use only the Silver Line service, uh, you know, between there and South Station, now you have a Silver Line service that also takes you down to the medical district if you go down through uh, downtown Boston, through Chinatown, and eventually down to, uh, to Dudley. So it's actually a very, very unique service because now we kind of will have kind of three branches of that service that will connect together and, and in the center of that will be South Station. So fares, um, you know, fares are gonna be the same as a subway fare. Um, that's 225 on the Charlie card or 275 if you buy a Charlie ticket. Uh, and we also will honor for seniors and customers to pay half fare, two children, 11 and under, ride for free with one adult. So consistent with the rest of our services that we provide. Uh, and I think this is a very uh, uh, unique product for us uh, and we wanted to make sure that it was priced so it was fair for our customers. Please. Um, a pass. Thank you, and I'm sorry to slow you down. Um, great presentation so far. So um, I was just wondering if the 1A or the 1 zone is the same fare relative to what you have here for the fees to get on the Silver Line. Yes, yeah, so uh, that's correct, absolutely. Um, and what we're seeing is we know that the bus is 170, uh, we see 225 for the Charlie card, so the same fare as Subway and Zone 1A as, as well. Um, folks will have, I believe it's 
the next slide, and I can let the GM comment on this. Okay, so I can comment on it. Um, when you get on the SL3, you'll be able to make a free transfer. So you can make a free transfer uh, to the blue line at airport, or you can make a free transfer to the red line at South Station. In addition to that, you can do a free transfer to the SL1, SL2, SL4, and SL5, so all the Silver Line products. Um, and in addition to that, you'll have a free transfer to all bus. What will happen is if you take the bus first and you pay $1.70, when you get on any of the Silver Line products or on the subway, it bumps you up to the $2.25. So you're not paying $1.70 plus $2.25. It, it covers the gap. So that would be the way it works there. But free transfers at Blue Line, South Station, on any subway, and free um, to the bus as well, free to the bus as well, as long as you're paying the two twenty five on the SL three first. Thank you. So another question is gonna be how often is it gonna run or what are the headways or the times between buses? So as you see here, we plan on running it through peak times, you know, every ten minutes. That's between seven AM and 9 a.m., that's the morning rush, and then the evening rush between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. will have those same type of headways. Uh, otherwise, when it's off peak, so the rest of the day or on the weekends, we'll be running between 12 and 15 minutes. Um, it's also about 27 minutes between Chelsea Station and South Station. Uh, the first inbound trip will start on the, morning, on the weekdays at 5 a.m., Saturdays at 5.30, Sundays at 6.30, and then the last outbound trip will be every day at 12.55. So we've had a lot of questions because obviously we have a bridge between here and there um, and the rerouting, uh, what happens when the Chelsea Bridge goes up. So when the bridge goes up, it slows everybody down, as you all know. Uh, so to keep the SL3 moving, we're gonna actually create a software uh, program which will let us know when the bridge is about to go up and provide operators with the quickest alternate route based on real-time traffic information. So this is the equivalent of having like ways on your bus. Uh, it's something that uh, is a new creative option uh, because I think it, uh, you know, when the bridge goes up, it's actually an ordeal not just for the bus service but for everybody else going through that part of town. So uh, we're gonna try to see how that works uh, to help improve that performance and that service as well. So as a commuter, uh, should I switch is a question that you might want to ask yourself. Uh, you know, changing your commute is a big decision, obviously. Um, so people are creatures of habit and they tend to use those services that they're used to using that always work the same way. Um, so the question is, is this the right service that I should be using? Our recommendation is our commuters should actually try it out. Um, maybe try it out on the weekend, see what the route looks like. That's what I do, frankly, when I want to learn the system is I go out on the weekends and take everything uh, into account. Take time to visit the new station. Enjoy the ride, you know, experience how easy and fast it is to get to the airport or the seaport or even the south station on the SL3. Try it out. I, I just recommend you try it, see how you like it, and see how it works for you. Uh, I think that what you're going to find is that it'll be a very nice service. I think it'll be nice to see the stops and, and the directness it is to get you in and out of the Chelsea area. Now, in addition to crossing bridges, obviously we're also going to be crossing a number of railroad crossings and busways along the route. Um, so one of the things that we encourage everyone as they're using the system is to remember that safety first uh, and make sure that your family and the people who are riding know that, that to follow these rules. Um, obviously, we are very cognizant of that and we've designed that in the training that we do with our operators. And we've also designed it in the way we look at uh, wayfinding and things like that for people to remain always vigilant as they're going through our system. We do care a lot about pedestrian safety. Um, so never walk along the tracks or uh, in a busway. Uh, I, I don't recommend that. Um, I think look both ways before crossing tracks or busways. That's the first, uh, I think, thing my mother ever told me when I was starting to walk. Uh, cross the tracks and busways only at marked pedestrian walkways and don't try to beat the train or the bus. Obviously, these are always things we should be considering. 
For those people that are driving around these routes, I also think it's important for people to obey all warning signs and signals. Never drive around a lowered gate. Um, um, many of the accidents that we see on the MBTA system are drivers who are not paying attention to that and sometimes get caught in a bad situation. Don't drive over the tracks unless there's room for your car on the other side and don't drive in the busway. So all of this information is available on the MBTA website. It has its own uh, section under the SL3. It can tell you about the routes, the stops, the schedules, the fares, and if you have any questions about safety on the system, it's also there and available. Please. Beginning with number one, uh, I'd like you to come to the podium here so the folks at home can uh, hear on cable TV. You want to defer to the gentleman here? Come on up, please. So I just got a um, few questions. On the um, buses with the silver line, they're buses or they're like trolleys? Uh, they're like, uh, I'll say, like they're, they're a bus, con con a combination of bus, okay. and they're connected, so they have, you know, some of them are longer configurations. Okay. So that goes into the next part of the question. Are they doubled? Yes. So they're doubled. Um, will there be any um, wait time at any of the locations, stops in Chelsea? You know how some buses come in, they wait five minutes and they take off. Will it be wait time or is it just continue motion movement? So I'll, I'm going to ask Mr. Carney to answer that question. Obviously, dwell time is part of the plan, right? People getting on and off the bus, mm -hmm. paying the fare. Yeah, other than that. Yeah. Hi. So um, at Chelsea Station, there will be what we call a layover. So it will have time between the time it drops off its passengers at Chelsea Station and the time it starts the next trip in. Other than that, all of the trips are through routes. So they just, they just pick up and drop off and then they, they move along. Okay, great. So um, how many buses or the lit, how many buses do you estimate in the peak hour on your slide that says from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. is the peak hour from four to six. How many do you expect to continue to move in the system? So it's, um, it'll be running at about a 10 minute headway. So 10 minutes between each bus. So about six per hour. So six buses per hour. And just on the layover, the layover is just loading in like if you so at, So at Chelsea Station, the layover is what, actually what we refer to as recovery time. So we want to make sure that the bus has enough time when it arrives at Chelsea Station to then depart on its next trip inbound on time. So that's the purpose of, the, of that recovery time. So when you say the Chelsea Station, you mean the first one then going on to Bellingham Square? Right, so it, essentially the market back at basket parking lot. Okay, and that's the only layover? Correct. On this route. Okay, thank you. Thank you. My, my name is Roman Paco, and I'd first like to say that if you must travel from Chelsea to the Seaport World Trade Center, take the SL3 bus and get there in half the time. Try it, you'll like it. I've got experience in traveling from Chelsea to the Seaport Center and the Seaport Center to Chelsea and it's a nightmare. Secondly, the Chelsea Street Bridge is the worst investment the state ever made. Uh, it's terrible. What I'd like to see, if maybe you can talk to the Coast Guard, to see if the ship traffic could not pass the bridge during morning rush hour, because it's important that the people get to work in time. Coming back, well, that's okay. And when the LNG tanker comes through, all traffic is stopped. So they do it. And 
You just have to approach them and try to bargain with them and hope uh, for the best. Uh, I am very much interested in just how the new uh, software is going to work because you have to give the bus driver enough time to get onto the alternate route. Because like once he gets onto Chelsea's coming to Chelsea on the Chelsea Street uh, roadway, it's too late to make a U-turn. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. So there's got to be some way that it really advance notice. And uh, I'm sure it can be done because I'm sure the Coast Guard communicates with the pilot of the vessel that's coming through and it, 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 he's at a certain place and it's going to say take five minutes before he reaches the, the bridge that you can uh, get the alternate routes. And what are the alternate routes? Does anyone know? Or Okay, we got the man. You had a lot there to say. <laughs> uh, there have been discussions with the Coast Guard. Uh, the Secretary of Transportation's office has been talking with them to see what we can do about giving us some priority during rush hours. We don't know where that conversation is going to go yet, um, but I know federal law gives marine traffic right of way, and I think everybody in the room knows has heard that before. Yeah. So we would, we would love to get priority. We don't know that we will. Um, the alternate route uh, coming from Airport Station puts us on Route 1A North to Route 16 to Eastern Ave and then into the station that way. Going the other way, it's essentially the reverse. So um, there are certainly limitations to that. Everybody knows when the bridge goes up, traffic is a problem. We are, we've been working with the bridge operator. Um, we are hoping that we will get a little bit of advance notice, so if we have a bus leaving um, Eastern Ave Station, right there at the corner of Central Ave and Eastern Ave, that we will be able to sneak out and get on our way on the alternate route before the, uh, the bridge traffic really gets, gets too bad. Great, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, uh, the other point is the Washington Avenue bus stop and the bus stops around that area, it's pretty difficult for the pedestrians who get off the bus and want to make the change. Uh, if you really study it, like the inbound bus stops right under the bridge almost. Uh, the outbound towards Chelsea stops way at the intersection of 6th Street and there's a great distance. I don't know, you know, it's just going to take a while for people to get used to it, but even with that impediment, believe me, it's better to take the SL3 because I helped a young lady whose husband would drive her to the seaport center on the way to work. And I'd go to the seaport center and pick her up and take her to Chelsea in no time versus taking the Silver Line to South Station and Mm -hmm. it, it, it's impossible. Uh, finally, the question is, when will the railroad station be relocated? Or anyone get any idea? Because I know that's a separate funded project. Uh, hey, sir. Um, I'm the project manager for that, so that is going out to advertisement in the summer, and it will take approximately two years. So we're looking at uh, 2020, uh, it should be up and running. Okay, I can assure you I'll be at the public meetings <laughs> for that project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take the SL3 line. Thank you. Thank Hello. I'm Alex Christmas. Um, I'm very excited about the SL3. I work in the Seaport area since January. I've been waiting for this, so thank you so much. A couple of questions. You may have commented on this, but are we going to have the bike rack in front of the buses as well to carry bikes into Boston? Yes, we are. Okay. 
Um, and then um, the 112 crosses the railroad and sometimes it stops as it's required to do and then goes through. Is there gonna be some overlap of communication uh, with the schedules with L um, the Silver Line and the 112? I think it's gonna be like it is now in a way. Um, and that's one of the things we're gonna try to look at how we can improve it. Uh, okay. But that, that uh, will still be a challenge, but we will know, um, you know what, what the schedules look like and how we're gonna be able to work with that. Okay. And then, um, so the high school's there, and um, and my, my one of my children goes to the high school, um, and there's the railroad cro uh, crossing. So is the expectation that the gate's going to come down um, yes. with the bus? So every ten minutes, how would how's that going to look like traffic-wise along with the commuter rail? So the uh, railroad crossing gates will not come down for the buses. Okay. So there's, um, it'll only come down for the trains as it does now. So there's, as part of the phase two of this project, traffic signals will be installed at Everett Ave and Spruce Street. And Arlington and 6th Street. Um, so when those signals are installed at that point, we will get a green light for the traffic signal to cross, but the Railroad crossing will only come down if there's a train there at the same time. So you, you're making it sound like that's in the future. What's the expectation um, as of April 21st? So for the first few months, we'll have police officers at Everett Ave okay. for certain hours, the, the heaviest traffic hours. Um, for the first two weeks, we will have them at Arlington and 6th and at Spruce Street. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be evaluating to see whether that needs to be expanded as we go through. We're working very closely with our safety department and others to make sure that whatever we're doing is, is safe. Is there any um, collaboration with the city of Chelsea and with the police department? We've been meeting quite a bit with the city of Chelsea. Okay. Okay. Jess, you want to take this? Yeah, sure. So we actually reached out to the Chelsea uh, education system. We've worked with, uh, we've been working to connect with the high schools specifically. So we knew that last week was MCAS tests and then this coming week is spring break so um, we are have flyers actually Rose created a whole bunch of flyers that we're dropping off to the high schools that will be distributed to the classrooms that have it's actually the flyer that you received with the map on one side and the safety the safety on the back um, but in May we have coordinated for our bus operations team inspectors the training school and other folks to actually go to an assembly a 60 minute assembly 45 minute assembly and teach the high school folks that the train is there and that the bus is there and that they need to be mindful and that how to cross at the at the grade crossings and things like that so mm -hmm. we've scheduled that for May we don't have a specific date but we've worked to um, do outreach at the schools because we know that the those intersections are close to the, the high schools okay uh, great thank you and my last question is that um, I thought there was some thought about this, about fare machines uh, being located at the um, commuter rail or the bus station. Is that still happening and when? So we're so close to um, the uh, next generation fare, fare system that the decision was made not to put uh, fare vending machines mm -hmm. in at these stations. Mm -hmm. So when ASC 2.0 comes out within the next year and a half, two years, um, at that point, there will be vending machines. Is there any vendors in Chelsea that uh, will hold these um, bus passes? Or how, I mean, besides the buses and the cash exchange, it would be helpful to have a central location. Right, I believe there are vendors. I don't know off the top of my head okay. where those are. That's Sorry. Right. And there definitely are at Haymarket and South Station and places like that. Yeah, I was hoping in Chelsea or even like our bordering cities that would be helpful too. So. Thank you, that was it. So there's a website um, which has the vendors on it. Um, take a look at there. If you don't find what you're looking for, um, let's, maybe we'll let, let Jesse know. And the plan with a new system in a couple of years is we're going to have even more locations that also sell the 
So before we move to speaker or uh, question number three, uh, I'd like to recognize City Councilor Bob Bishop. Uh, he has to leave, so I'd like to bring him up uh, for his questions. Sure. Hi, my name is Bob Bishop, and I represent a district that is probably the furthest away from the Silver Line and still be in Chelsea as you can get. Um, my concern, and I didn't hear it mentioned in the presentation, is that four-letter word, park. Nobody has said anything about parking. And I know um, that the Moolahs has a large parking area down there. Uh, I don't know if they're going to allow you or allow the, the commuters on the Silver Line to park their vehicles there. I'm sure this is all geared to have people get to that line by other means of means of travel, like the 111 or, or some other bus line. What's going to happen when the construction starts on the Tobin Bridge and the construction begins on the bridge in Boston? I'm fearful that after a month of sitting in traffic for an hour or an hour and a half trying to get in and out of Boston, people are going to start coming to Chelsea, parking the cars, getting on the 111 up in Prattville, and coming down and getting on the Silver Line that way. Uh, to save an hour, I'm sure, or more to travel each way. Um, I think it's going to be a nightmare when that construction starts. And that's my only fear of, on this whole thing, is that uh, that's what some people may choose to do. Um, I don't know if we have a contingency plan for that, uh, or we're going to have to deal with it when it happens. But I just wondered what, after putting the silver line in and not providing any parking at all, I just don't know what the thinking was there, or maybe there was none available. Uh, I'm sure that you feel that most of the people are going to get there by another means of travel other than vehicles. So if you could just say what you know what you have to say on that subject. Thank you. I think you have anything on parking? So this service is, um, as you mentioned, this service is meant for people who are walking or people who are biking or people who are taking um, the bus connections in. So. Um, and the bus routes are actually labeled again on that flyer um, just to make the connection. I think what we, um, what we ended up seeing was that uh, for Route 111, we have around 50% of people who are taking a one seat ride within Chelsea, but 50% of the people are actually connecting to the blue line and the red line. Um, and a large percentage of those folks are within the walking distance to those Chelsea new stations. So what our hope is to see is that people will be walking or biking to the new, new stations. Now, as far as parking, you're right, there's really no public parking or there's no MBTA parking at any of those stations at all. So I would say um, that it's really meant to be an urban service where there's not, uh, there is no parking offered. So um, it isn't... I don't know exactly um, the analysis that we ran because I was not here when the SL3 planning started and began. Um, but I do know that part of the part of what we are so excited about for the SL3 is that it actually uses the right of way for the commuter rail. So the reason why we're able to have dedicated bus lane in Chelsea is because the dedicated bus lane actually fits within the, the right of way of the commuter rail uh, track. So as a result of that, there's not a lot of extra room for parking, which I know um, is, uh, is not ideal for folks that want to be driving to the SL3, but again, meant as an urban, an urban transportation system. I, mean, I, I might add one thing, is that we're, now that you've brought it up, I think it's something that we'll probably look at uh, and see what happens as we plan for these other construction projects that are gonna start uh, in the future, uh, one of the things we'll take a look at and make sure we look at that is, is what happens with those patterns. Uh, obviously, it's important to understand that. We'll certainly put that into, into list. I anticipate that our local traffic and parking commission is going to be looking at the areas in and around the four uh, SL3 stations and likely to be considering what it has already done around the existing one commuter rail station, which is if it sees that this is becoming a problem, it will probably adopt after a public hearing uh, some all-day resident sticker parking to deter commuters from driving to those spots and parking in the neighborhood. So I expect the Traffic Commission is actually going to look at that 
either at its April or its May meeting. Hi, my name is Virginia Todd, and um, I'm excited for the SL3 mainly because I like to use the airport, I like to travel, and I also would love to go to Amtrak, you know, to go to New York and stuff. So that my main use is for traveling, which means I will have luggage. Are the buses designed so that you would have a place to store your luggage and carry your luggage instead of blocking the whole aisle? No, they're not. Okay. Um, these, these are 60-foot buses. There's, there's some room. We will see some buses that are rack, lift rack equipped, luggage rack equipped, but those are only buses that are really intended for the airport terminal services. This does not go straight to the airport terminals, so we don't expect to see a lot of baggage on there. We may see some, but I think we can, we can work it in. Okay. And then it would be great, I would just piggyback on his parking thing. That would be another thing. It would be great if Chelsea residents could park at, you know, the parking lot in Market Basket to get to South Station to go to New York or go to the airport or something like that. That would be convenient. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Chris Haight. Uh, I'm a resident here in Chelsea, uh, soon to be a homeowner, actually. Um, I actually work in the seaport. I work with Miss Christmas. Um, we actually work together. Uh, so we're going to be riding the Silver Line together. I'm very excited. Um, I'm also the photographer who has been taking photographs of this project for three years, and it's very, very exciting to see this project finally come from a bunch of muddy dirt and tires to a busway. So I'm very excited. I actually have two questions. Um, I want I have a question about when the bridge goes up. Is there any, uh, there's a rumor floating around the internet that says that uh, you're going to reroute some of the buses as they come out of the Ted Williams Tunnel to make it easier to go up 1A rather than go to airport because I do know that the road system around the airport is a little convoluted, so. So no, we, our routing should always take us to airport station. So you're not going to bypass any stations? Uh, not, not, that is not our intent. Okay, good. Um, the second question I had is about the signals. What's the timeline to actually have the signals installed? Mr. McCormick? Oh. So the signals have to tie into the railroad signals, and the railroad signals are being changed for the new commuter rail station. Um, so, and we have to tie in the gray crossings to the new signal system. It's fairly complicated, but uh, we estimate probably like a year into phase two mm. that we could get those up and running. Okay, so you're gonna continue to run transit police during rush hour up until that point, correct? Because I mean, I hate to say this, this it's the signals that are really gonna make the service work um, because they're gonna be able to go from Eastern Ave all the way to Market Basket without ever stopping and that's without, except for the stations of course, so. Yep, so um, it will be there's going to be three months of uh, police details at, at that main Everett uh, Gray Crossing, and then it will be reassessed um, there out from there. Okay, great. And then what about the platform um, that's going to connect Washington Ave to Bellingham Square? What is the timeline on that? Because that wasn't finished about a week ago when I took photos. Uh, right now it's early September, early right September. after Labor Day. Yeah, because that's actually the connection point that the gentleman was talking about earlier. So thank you very much. I'm very excited. Thank you. Is there anybody else that uh, may have changed their mind that would like to ask a question? Okay. Uh, any concluding remarks, Mr. GM? Well, look, I just want to thank the city, um, the, 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 the citizens of Chelsea, and also all the people who uh, have been waiting for this service. We're excited that we're going to start it uh, next week, and we're looking forward to uh, learning as we do the service, how we can improve it over time, and how it can really be a, a really uh, a great uh, mark for not just Chelsea, but for all the citizens who are traveling between here and Boston every day. Our main goal is to improve service and to provide you with a service that's safe and that uh, is the one that really helps to promote uh, use of the system. So thank you very much for being here today.